Angry Kaido, Happy Kaido, Sad Kaido, Drunk Kaido, High Kaido, or Haido for short, no matter what iteration we see of this man beast, one thing remains universally true, which is that Kaido is a stunningly unpopular character. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and up until today, I had no idea that narwhals were like real creatures. That blows my mind. But today we are here to talk about something I did know, something that has perplexed me for as long as I've known about this particular thing, and that particular thing is Kaido. Specifically, the incredible unpopularity and perhaps even failure of Kaido as an antagonist in One Piece. Now that might seem like a bit of a harsh thing to say, but let's remember that Kaido is a big boy and I'm sure that he can take a bit of criticism here and there. And if not, then I won't be alive much longer anyway, so let's all just enjoy the video while we can. Because the fact is that Kaido is not a popular villain. And we can empirically prove this using official popularity polls, which are specifically designed to measure the metric trick of popularity. In the most recent globally conducted poll, Kaido ranked in 65th place, which to be fair, out of over 1,000 characters to choose from, honestly, well, that's not too bad. However, and you knew there was a however coming, otherwise this video wouldn't exist. However, it's far from great and even good, considering his role in the series as some sort of ultimate antagonist guy, helming an entire saga, which has spanned over a decade at this point. To put a character in that kind of position, you'd probably want them to be more popular than say, a polar bear, a koala, or even men in boxes, which Kaido is not. So today we're gonna figure out why Kaido hasn't quite landed with the fan base, as well as how that's affected Wano, and whether or not that can be salvaged going forward. And it's all going to begin with a quick round of Kaido or some Gaido, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. In an alternate universe, the Straw Hats arrive at alternate Wano and are about to encounter their main arc villain. But your job is going to be to guess whether that villain will be Kaido or just some guy. Because according to a lot of the data available, that's how we tend to view Kaido. He's there. Should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Ground Line Review, resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if you do guess correctly, then you will become the main antagonist of Wano. All hail you, whoever you are. So who will it be, Kaido or some Gaido? Choose now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it was some guy. I think his name is, uh, I don't know, Chris? Sure, that'll do. So if you guessed incorrectly, then you know the thing to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. Now, to further emphasize Kaido's unpopularity, I think that a comparison is in order. Like I said before, Kaido is very much our king daddy villain of this whole New World saga. Everything and every one we've done has been leading straight into his dragon roost. And in an ideal world, that would involve a steady incline of quality antagonists that lead us to this ultimate of destinations. In our case, those quality antagonists include include other names such as Don Quixote Doflamingo and Charlotte Katakuri. You may have heard of them because in the World Top 100 character poll, Doflamingo was 20th and Katakuri ranked an absolutely absurd 14th, which is amazing for our blonde and our redhead, but it does leave our brunette fairly overshadowed. And yes, the male adjective is also brunette, albeit spelled differently, but pronounced the same way, which is not confusing at all, so thank you, English. But ideally, what we would want is a situation where Doflamingo was a great villain with Katakuri being a step above him and Kaido managing to outshine both of them. Instead, what's happened is that after Katakuri, we've had a bit of an accident and fall off the stairs, landing straight on the flight below us. Because according to all data, Kaido is a fair few steps down. And you might at this stage be asking, but Grand Line Review Man, is it really fair to compare Kaido when his story hasn't fully been told yet? And I would answer yes, yes it is. If only for the reason that we are roughly 100,000 chapters into Wano right now. And I do think that by this point, we should have a solid sense of our main antagonist, which is actually actually something that both Doflamingo and Katakuri excelled at. Long before their stories actually concluded or really got fleshed out at all, giving us that full picture of them, they still managed to garner absurd popularity. And I'm certain that our opinions of Kaido can and will change in the future due to that missing information, but Wano is now officially the longest arc in One Piece and evidently, Kaido still has yet to really surpass the antagonists that were meant to build up to him. It's a very bizarre situation. So let's see why Kaido doesn't quite stack up. Now I'm sure that everyone has their own criteria, but for me, there are four things that I look for in a solid antagonist. The first of which is, it's admittedly extremely shallow, but it is design. A good antagonist is visually arresting and compelling without being over-engineered. For example, Doflamingo is our obvious success.
success story here. The components of his design are deceptively simple. Big fluffy pink feathers and some schmick sunglasses. Add his eternal smile into the mix and he will instantly take command of any scene he's featured in. The same thing goes for Carter Curry. I mean, yes, he is a bit more ornate with certain features, but he's basically an imposing tattooed guy in tight black pants who hides his mouth. And just to dwell on that last feature there, that creates a glorious amount of intrigue. In very much the same way that Dolph Lomingo always hiding his eyes adds a wonderful layer of mystery to his character. So I'll definitely say right here and now that that sort of mystery is definitely something that Kaido's raw aesthetic is missing. Not that it's essential, but it's an advantage that the other two have. When we look at Kaido, in theory, he does follow the simplistic yet cool design idea, but I do think he suffers from a couple of aesthetic issues. One of which is that he is a clear case of big dude syndrome. His combined height and width don't produce that same sort of schmick feel that classically popular villains tend to embody. And not just Doflamingo or Katakuri either, you can look all over One Piece. Crocodile, Rob Lucci, Mihawk, and L, any of the Marine Admirals. Whoever it is, most of the characters that tend to soar in popularity share these slimmer, more human physiques. As Lady Gaga would say, walk, walk, fashion baby, and then other things. The characters that don't follow this model of fashion, however creative they may be, tend to sink to the bottom of the popularity bucket. And it is in the depths of this bucket that we find large mothers, phallic vampire neck things, and of course, the Hody Joneses. And Hody Jones, by the way, is a perfect example of failed villain aesthetics. Something that Oda and or his editors realized, which is why Hody Jones went through a radical redesign right before the climax of Fishman Island. Not that it helped much, but it did help some. But back to Kaido, I love his design. I love it so much that I even have this fun figure of him, which never quite sits right on its base, which really annoys me, but I'm not gonna blame Kaido for that because he does admittedly look pretty damn cool. But if we're talking about setting someone up to be a top tier memorable villain, then whether we consciously realize it or not, this design is going to be more of a roadblock than others. And when we're talking about others, I specifically mean others like this. This is a good example of other. All right, now let's make them fight. Of course, design is far from everything, and the second thing I look for in a great antagonist is some kind of profound feeling. I want to look at an antagonist and feel something. With Crocodile during Alabaster, that feeling was one of disgust and hatred, to the point where I needed to see him get whacked in the face, chest, and balls approximately 5,600 times each. Meanwhile, with Katakuri, that feeling for me tends to be one of empathy. At his core, Katakuri is not an evil man, and so I end up sympathizing with his situation. Then with Dolph Lomingo, it is pure intrigue. I don't don't understand him, I can never predict him. All I know is he's going to do some wildly outrageous crap and I am here for it. And this is actually kind of why Rob Lucci doesn't do a whole lot for me in retrospect because he's such a blank slate of a character. The person I really hated during any sobby was Spanda and Lucci was more of a punching bag style main antagonist. And right now I feel like we're in a very similar situation. The antagonist on Wano I have a strong feeling about is Orochi. I am heavily invested in causing him as much pain and suffering as possible. But Kaido is tricky. Like, he does despicable things, but he also has a strong code of honor. He's not entirely stiff and stoic, but his other emotional ranges are, well, they're quite limited. So it's hard to truly hate him, but it's also hard to really like him because it's hard to, you know, feel anything about him. As it is, I just feel like I don't know him. Kaido is something of a stranger, a big vat of neutrality that I'm consistently waiting for him to break in some way, shape or form. However, there is one thing that Kaido does excel at, which is the third feature I look for being fear. I've kept the separate from general feeling generation, because I think that no matter who you are, an antagonist in this context needs to be capable of conjuring fear. As for why you need such a thing, let's take Caesar Clown. He has a cool enough design and he elicits a very strong emotion from all over the spectrum, from utter disgust to uh, this kind of glorious hilarity. He's funny, clowns are funny. What Caesar does not have though is fear. At no point was I ever afraid of Caesar Clown, which negates any actual power he may have had as an antagonist and thus kind of makes me feel feel like parts of Punk Hazard were a bit of a waste of time. But Kaido excels at fear. At this stage, it's what sustains his role in the series. He is a brutal, all-powerful, seemingly immortal force that no individual can take down. He is unstoppably ruthless and that is terrifying. Whenever one of our good dude guys is on the same page as Kaido, I do legitimately fear for them because chances are it's not going to end well. So Kaido does genuinely have that factor going for him. But our final component is motivation. To me, antagonists can live or 
die based on their goals. And Kaido's ambition is, uh, that's quite stereotypical, honestly. In the end, what he wants to do is cause a big old war, do general bad things. And yeah, look, I know it's a bit more complicated than that, but what it boils down to is bad guy doing bad things for the sake of being a bad boy. Compare that to someone like Katakuri whose actions were all committed to protect his family. That sort of motivation is easily identifiable to most readers or watchers, which automatically makes Katakuri more compelling because you understand him. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that's the standard for all of One Piece though. Most major antagonists tend to share the Kaido style goals, like Crocodile who wanted a big super weapon to take over the world and such. Doflamingo, sure, he's slightly more interesting because he's sort of like the middle management equivalent of a bad guy, constantly juggling the world government and Kaido so that he can survive and thrive. And actually, just a warning, I've got some Hody Jones praise incoming, so just be prepared for that. Because I would actually say that by far the strongest aspect of the Hody Jones character was his motivation of being a racist zealot. It's not at all empathizable, but it's something that we know and face in reality, thus making it more understandable and allowing us to have some sort of stake in whatever it is he's doing. Whereas Kaido's plunge the war into world ambition is so far out of the realm of what we know that it does fall a little bit flat, as do the goals of many other One Piece antagonists, mind you. But for our ultimate saga bad guy antagonist, dude, I think he needs a bit more than that. Like an MCU Thanos sort of drive, something not justifiable, but at the very least comprehensible. And I don't comprehend Kaido's war desire because this does have a massive effect on Wano as a whole because this is his story. The narrative of Wano is not about Luffy or the Straw Hats, it's about Kaido. In addition to other things, of course, like it's about Odin, the vassals, the nation's citizens, but the only reason why any of that story is important at all or needs to be told to begin with is because of Kaido. He is the fearsome man creature at the helm of everything. And that means that he needs to command this story. But right now he feels like more of a side character caught up in crazy events. Like he just sort of accidentally found himself in the role of main antagonist. He doesn't have the same weight that Doflamingo did on Dressrosa or Crocodile on Alabasta or even Katakuri's position on Whole Cake Island. There's a lot of factors that are currently missing from Kaido that his more successful predecessors managed to carry and even embody. Yes, I fear Kaido. He's a big scary dude, bruh. His design helps a lot with that, but it's not as effective as the design of others have been. And other than fear, I don't have any strong feelings regarding Kaido whatsoever. I do like those rare moments where he reveals a sliver of personality, but those are few and far between. And as for why Kaido is doing what he's doing, I can only say that I care so much as it affects other characters that I actually, well, do care about. And that's just not a great position for this grand antagonist to be in. And once again, this is all liable to change with a very simple flashback at some point. In fact, Kaido could even go full Senor Pink and become the most sympathetic man baby who has ever lived in the span of a single chapter, but I do think it's a big ask. One that Oda is fully equipped to pull off, and who knows, a year, a month, maybe even a week from now, I do expect this video to be peppered with comments like, lol, this didn't age well. But this is the state that we're in right here and now. Over 100 chapters into an arc, well and truly into the action-packed climax, and our ultimate enemy to overcome is still such a neutral existence. And it shows not only in popularity polls, but every time I make a video focusing solely on Kaido, it heavily underperforms. Which tells me that people see Kaido as a topic, and a lot of them just choose not to click. Now that could also be an issue with me not making the titles and thumbnails appealing enough, but at the same time, what exactly is it that I'm supposed to sell you? Kaido, as a character currently, just doesn't have access to the full narrative arsenal that previous antagonists have had at their disposal, meaning that there is very, very little for me to be capable of selling about him. It's hard to create an intriguing title involving Kaido because he is fundamentally a sort of plain entity right now. So I haven't made it yet, but I fully expect to make this video a bit more appealing by adding Doflamingo Katakuri or even both into the thumbnail because Kaido cannot carry this on his own. And that's also potentially an issue with Wano as an arc. It's very much carried more by the lingering presence of Kozuki Odin at this stage than it is by our primary antagonist. And I do think it's about time that Kaido started to put in his fair share of heavy lifting. So all I can really do is look forward to the day when Ichiro Oda decides to reveal a little bit more about Kaido, thus making this video entirely pointless. But for a video that will never be pointless, do check out this discussion about how Ace ruined everything, and I mean everything in One Piece. Who would have thought that one man could have screwed things up so astoundingly? So I look forward to seeing you there.